Welcome to Mayo Medical Laboratory's Hot Topics. These presentations provide short discussion of current topics and may be helpful to you in your practice. Our speaker for this program is Dr. Glenn Roberts, a professor of laboratory medicine and pathology and microbiology at Mayo Clinic, as well as a consultant in the Division of Clinical Microbiology. Dr. Roberts discusses the features of specific organisms under direct microscopic examination using multiple preparations. This module examines paracoccidioides and sporothrix. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Thank you, Sharon, for that introduction. I have nothing to disclose. This is an ongoing presentation that focuses on the individual groups of organisms as seen in the direct examination of clinical specimens. The next slide shows a number of the methods that are used for detecting uh, bacteria and, and uh, other things and fungi can be also detected in those particular stains if one just simply looks for them. It's a matter of recognition and being aware that you'd have to think clinical microbiology when you start looking at all of these stains. The next slide shows a continuation of different methods that can be used like the acid fast stain and the pap smear used in pathology and histopathologic sections that where you can see fungal organisms. The next slide shows you an organism that is not commonly seen in the United States, but nevertheless it is seen in, in Central and South America, so we're out to see it at some time. It's Paracoxidioides brasiliensis. The hallmark of this organism is the yeast form. This is a dimorphic fungus that has both a yeast and a mold form. The yeast form is a large budding yeast, 8 to 40 microns, sometimes even larger than that. There are multiple buds around the parent cell. They make it resemble a mariner's wheel like you see on a ship. And the buds come off in all dimensions, the top, the bottom, and the sides. And when you put a cover slip on it, it appears that they're only on the sides. But it's a round ball, and you'll see on the next slide what I'm talking about. You can see some in the background there. This is a, a yeast that is taken from a, a culture kept at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade. And it's typical for what you would see. Uh, if you were looking for the textbook perfect picture of an organism. Unfortunately, that's not what you see oftentimes. The next slide shows you what you might see, and this is not anything that would tell you that this Paracoxidioides brasiliensis, except that it is. We know that by culture. There are a number of yeast cells in there. There's one in the, kind of the top portion of the slide that shows a bud on the left-hand side. You would expect to find multiple buds, but they're not present here. What you do see about maybe 5 o'clock is there are two cells that are sitting adjacent to each other, and they in, in some way resemble Blastomyces. This organism used to be called Blastomyces brasiliensis because it mimicked Blastomyces, and so that's why, that's why I point this out. The next slide shows you, I think it's a gram stain of a specimen that I acquired when I was in Honduras, and what you can see are the numerous cells in the background that appear to be stained with a gram stain. They have stippling in the center. And if you look around on the left-hand side of this, of the, uh, off the center, you can see there are a number of cells of different sizes. None of them really show multiple buds. And so you would continue to look around in all the fields to try to find that, that feature. The next slide shows you just another field of that same section. But if you look on the right-hand side, there's a cell exhibiting multiple buds coming off all the way around the side. You don't see them on the top there, but that is what you probably would see. It's not textbook perfect, but you don't see those sort of things all that often. The next slide shows you a blood film, and basically in there are all these yeast cells of paracoxidioides, but very little budding at all. So again, it just points out that you're going to see different forms, and you need to look around and make sure that uh, you're not missing something uh, that, that's in another field. The next slide shows you a histopathologic section with almost in the center, a little right of the center, you can see a cell that has some buds coming off around the periphery. And that's what you'd like to see in a tissue section. Sometimes when the processing is going on, those buds are knocked off. The other thing that happens sometimes is that we see small forms of Paracoxidioides brasiliensis, a small as histoplasma, as small as two microns in size with little tiny buds coming off the outside. And it's difficult to recognize those, so you just might be aware that it can occur. This slide is an overstained silver stain, but on the, about uh, 3 o'clock, 
you can see one that's, that has a central cell it has all the buds coming off around the perimeter. So this is what what Tepericoxidioides brasiliensis would look like. In the lower left hand corner you see a cell that has a small cell attached to it at the top. Some people might say well that looks like the, the beak that you see with Blastomyces but if you look around in that field and you happen to see up about maybe 10 o'clock you see another one with multiple buds you would have no problem recognizing this. I think one thing uh, that is important to remember as well as uh, other things is that when you look for these organisms you look for the common organisms first and you look for an uncommon manifestation of common organisms next and then you start looking for all the uncommon things and so when you sit down and look at one of these things and somebody says ah oh, that's going to be pericoxidioides the odds are it's probably not going to be and you probably didn't even need to bring it up so what you do is you look at, for the, the whole, at all the whole slide and you get a consensus of what's there and then generally you'll find that it's common thing or some uncommon manifestation but nevertheless you can see some of these and you just have to be astute enough to remember what they look like this next organism that we're going to discuss on the next slide here is Sporothrix schinkii. Sporothrix schinkii is something that we see uh, not infrequently. It's a small, it's another dimorphic fungus that has both a yeast and a mold form. And the yeast form is what we're seeing here. These are small budding yeast cells uh, in the same size range as histoplasma, anywhere from 2 to 6 microns generally. They're oval to elongated, and you can see that some of them look like cigars, and they're called cigar bodies just for that reason. Some of them will have a bud or two uh, attached that haven't detached whenever they uh, the slide happened to be made. Ordinarily, they just have a single bud, but it's the it's the elongated yeast cell that is a hallmark of this organism. When you see that, you pretty much know what it is. The next slide shows you a PAS stain slide with all of the elongated cells in there. The major difficulty uh, with diagnosing uh, Sporothrix schinkii in a clinical specimen using direct microscopic examination is that you just don't see them. This happens to be one where you did and it's a rare occurrence that you see one that stains this well. Most of the time you can grow it in the culture and you can't see it on direct examination. So if you did see it, it would be these elongated cells like you see here. Some of them can be round and some of them can be oval. The next slide shows you uh, some of the cells that are elongated up in the upper left part of the slide up and then that's pretty much what's what's there they're few in number on this particular one but again most of the time you just don't see it and no one knows the reason for this the next slide shows you an enlarged view of the first slide that you saw of this organism this was from a bron from a bronchoalveolar lavage and uh, it was a diagnosed by just simply looking in there and seeing well we see elongated yeast cells and the only one that we ever see that's elongated is sporothrix so they stuck their neck out on the, on the limb and said okay this is sporothrix and it turned out it grew that organism up so that is a hallmark of the organism the elongated budding yeast cells